Did you know that? Even though Ableton's granulator looks hella complicated, there's really only three knobs you need to worry about, or that it can elevate super saws to an entirely new level. Like, would you believe me if I told you that it can turn a super saw into a more bold and textured, complex soundscape? If not, this is the video for you. And it all starts with the bass sample. And I don't mean bass as in like bass dubstep. I mean bass as in the sample that everything is going to be granulated. I like to make one myself so that when I'm writing a song, it transfers over really well once I start resampling and chopping it up. So I'm just gonna start with a chord progression on a chaos saw, which I just made using Ableton's wavetable. Feel free to pause champ. And while I put this chord progression together, I think this would be the perfect moment to talk about this video's sponsor. Now, as an independent artist, a great way to add to your brand is by adding those cool looping videos to your song. Plus it makes you look super professional and are a great way to add visuals beyond just the album art and aren't as big a time and monetary commitment as music videos. These are called canvases. And guess what? When you link your DistroKid account to your Spotify artist account, you get access to add canvases to your own music. This also gets you instant verification on your Spotify page, which gives you that sweet, sweet check mark, all while claiming your page to prove to people that this is you. How much does this cost? Free. That's right, it's included with your DistroKid account, which you get unlimited uploads, keep 100% of the royalties, and it's only $23 a year. But, oh my gosh, you're watching this channel right now? Guess what? 7% off your first year. Just use my VIP link. That also helps support the channel. So what are you waiting for? Go make your music not only sound great, but look great as well. Sign up for DistroKid. Use my VIP link to do it. Thank you for sponsoring the video, DistroKid. And I write a chord progression like this. So the idea here is to just come up with a chord progression that has harmonically dense chords. And we will continue to add to this because the idea is to get a bass sample with a full spectrum of sound. So the next thing I'm gonna add is something like a Reese bass. And why not add a poop saw as well? And finally, some kind of lead melody with lots of notes and layers that'll eventually get picked up by the granulator. All right, so you don't have to go as extra credit as me here, but I made an entire sample, an entire loop, but the point of this is to bring it into granulator. So make a new MIDI track and drag in Granulator. You can grab this just by searching Granulator. It's under Max for Live, under Max Instruments. Right there, Granulator 2. Now that we have this in here, next we need a sample for it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to hit Resample here, Record, and then record the loop that we just made. You can also do this with loops that you find online or old songs that you have, as long as there's no percussion or drums in it. Now that we have our sample, you can just take this, double click granulator and drag in the sample that we just made. And what I'm gonna do is actually just mute everything we just made and put it into granulator. Once you're in granulator, Make sure to select the C3 key and just drag it on out all the way. And now you might see this granulator has a ton of different options, but we're just gonna focus on three knobs. And obviously once you get a handle on the granulator, you can experiment with all the other stuff, but for simplicity's sake, and cause I don't wanna make this a 40 minute video that sounds like I'm just reading the manual to you, we're only going to use the grain knob here the file position and the spray. Those are the three knobs that we can turn and automate in order to make this sample sound good. So if I hit the C3 key, 
You can see what the granulator is doing and it's picking a portion of our sample and just playing it and looping it over and over. So this little thing that's looping, that's called a grain. That's where the name granulator comes from because the granulator resamples your song, turns it into grain and synthesizes that. Before we start chopping it up, we're going to automate. We're going to click file position and we're actually going to ramp it up. I'm actually going to ramp it up more like this. I'm going to zoom in and we're going to make a ramp up hitting the B key, making the pencil, maybe choosing 30 second, and then we're going to draw maybe a little bit more loosely. Now, now listen to that. And hey, maybe I don't like that. This is all experimentation. So as it plays back, we can adjust the grain. If you want more of the original sample to come through, turn grain to the left. And when you turn it to the right, you turn a whole sample into one note. And this is how I actually got the lead for my Die For You Valorant remix. And then the third knob I want to worry about is this spray knob here. This will add grains to the left and the right of the file position that you pick and just adds a little bit more texture to the sound. You can start turning some of these knobs. Now this sounding a bit busy, right? So what I like to do once I have this grain sample is put it to like a new spot and then bring back our baseline. So this is our Reese base and our poop saw. And if you bring in your base layer, you have an anchor to hold it together so that it's not too, too crazy. And I'm gonna activate those. And then you can even just resample this again, chop it up even more, fiddle around some more with this file position. The more steps you add into it, the more closely it follows the original chord progression. But this way you can move the chord progression around a little bit more. It's getting a little too chaotic for you. You can always add some auto pan. And this is before even adding drums into it. And some good processing to put on the granulator channel. Stuff like overdrive to add a bit more distortion to it. The classic wombo combo, OTT. And as you add different processing and effects, you can keep turning these two knobs. or adjusting the automation on the file position. And this can also be the source of the missing layer that your future bass or melodic dubstep song might have. But you can move it also outside of these genres. I've got another song here and I've actually resampled what's in the granulator all only had an auto pan and some reverb and some EQ on it into a sample that sounds like this and chopping it up at strategic places giving it little stutters and it just kind of comes together as that missing layer like And that's the power of Granulator. It can elevate your melodic songs by adding texture that's just more complex than 
your standard super saw. And if you're still looking at this interface all like, I don't know, man, there are other plugins like Quanta and Autochroma, which have nicer interfaces, more capabilities, but free is more your style. Don't sleep on Ableton's granulator. And even I used to be super overwhelmed by granulator itself, putting off how to use it. But once I focused on the three knobs, just made more sense. And hopefully it makes more sense to you as well and you can give this sound design technique a try and go make some bangers.